I teach thousands of students a year, and I hear this a lot. If I could just get a high enough score on the SAT, then I will be set. If I can just find an internship, then I will be set. If I can just submit this application, if I could just get into my dream college, then I will be set. Raise your hand if you have these thoughts going through your mind. I can deeply relate to this because I too was very much, if I could just finish X, then I will be set kind of student. Completing each test, project, application would get me to the next point on a very linear plan that I had mapped for myself in my head. But when I found myself in college, working my way through a very demanding and rigorous major, I discovered that this inner dialogue did not go away, despite supposedly being set as I told myself years before. If anything, I was just now applying the same mindset to my new situation. If I could just get through this problem set, finish this quarter, graduate, find my first job, then surely I will be set. I finally questioned this way of thinking when I got my first job as an engineer and took a good hard look around me. Here's what I noticed. First, I was the only woman on my team. In fact, women were noticeably missing from many key positions and leadership ranks across the company even though I had majored in electrical engineering and was used to being the only girl in a room, I still found this surprising. I remember being surrounded by so many bright girls in my high school classes and I was wondering, where did they all go? The other thing I noticed was the individuals who were growing in their careers and respected and recognized for their efforts all seem to be well-versed in a specific set of skills. They communicated effectively. They had the ability to advocate for themselves, for money, for time, resources, and projects in order to produce the best possible work. They were able to forge deep connections and identify opportunities other people missed. They even looked like they were having fun so much so that their passion and their energy were contagious. It suddenly dawned on me that the traits and the skills that I was rewarded for in high school, being studious, heads down, a rule follower, were no longer working. Despite our accomplishments and dedication, I, along with so many women, were at serious risk of being the best kept secret of our organizations. While there are legitimate biases, discrimination, and other obstacles holding women back in the workplace, there is also something noticeably missing from our education. Here I was at 22, discouraged and drained, not because of the work, but because I had never learned how to be in the driver's seat of my own journey. When we are so consumed with the step immediately in front of us, it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture. The small thinking can hold us back. It forces us to play small. It makes us reactive to the wants, choices, and decisions of others, and not necessarily forward-looking. We try to meet other people's expectations or compare our results with someone else's outcomes instead of focusing on our own path. Ultimately, it keeps us from discovering the full potential of our strengths and our interests and live a life of meaning and fulfillment. After experiencing firsthand the lack of diversity and how women were leaving the workforce in droves due to this challenging environment, I decided to do something about it. In 2011, I launched Miss CEO, a company whose goal is to provide young women with leadership skills, mentorship, 
and career exploration opportunities. Our students develop key skills not traditionally taught in the classroom, like networking, goal setting, negotiation, effective communication, time management, and learning from failure. This toolkit is instrumental to the success of so many individuals I saw firsthand thriving and can positively impact a student's academic, professional, and personal journey. A common misconception about leadership is that you don't need to worry about developing these skills until you are older. But oftentimes, pushing this education aside can put you at a significant disadvantage. Learning these skills as a young adult can help you navigate important decision points and significantly change the trajectory you are on. Here are three skills you can start implementing today in order to start aiming high in your life. One, find sponsors. Some of you may already consider a teacher, an older student, an advisor, as an excellent mentor in your life. They provide you with valuable advice and emotional support as you think about the road ahead. However, I want to challenge you to start connecting with people who can not only serve as a sounding board for you, but who upon getting to know you and your goals can also advocate for you and open doors. These people known as sponsors are usually highly respected in their fields and can connect you with the knowledge, community, and opportunities that can help you dive deeper into your area of interest. Two, tell people what you want. When you meet with people, sponsors or otherwise, don't expect their inspiring knowledge to just rub off on you. Make your intention and your purpose clear. I'm not talking about a 20 year plan or even a one year plan for that matter. If you set up a meeting for or an informational interview with someone, be clear about your goal. What are you looking to learn? What do you need help with? Communicating this information is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of intellectual humility and eagerness to learn. Making it easy for people to help you and feel invested in your success by clearly connecting the dots for them. Three, showcase initiative. Opportunities to demonstrate initiative and set yourself apart from the rest are everywhere. If you have a meeting, take an extra few minutes to prepare and send out an agenda. Instantly impress your peers and teachers by suggesting and even testing out ideas to improve a problem or situation. If you sign up to do something, complete the task or communicate progress quickly. If you meet with a mentor or an advisor, follow up and go beyond the generic thank you. Build trust with the other person by specifying how that person's advice impacted you and the steps you are planning to take as a result. When you start practicing these skills, connecting with sponsors, telling people what you want, demonstrating initiative, you will be able to explore and create opportunities for yourself, especially if you don't have a clear set of instructions to go after what you want. Many years ago, I had a student who reached out to me after attending a Miss CEO workshop. Inspired by what she learned during the one hour session, she sent me a thank you email just a few hours later. But this was no ordinary thank you. The student enthusiastically discussed how she planned to immediately apply the lessons she learned from me that day. She went on to share how her city lacked leadership and mentorship resources for students. She asked if there was any way she could work with our team as an intern to create a summer leadership program for her peers. I was blown away. Her sincere gratitude, enthusiasm, and level of initiative were impressive. 
Although I had no plans of expanding our programs, she provided such a compelling proposal that I couldn't help but feel excited and want to support her. And it was well worth it. She leveraged her leadership skills to successfully manage all the logistics necessary to put together a memorable summer program. Years later, she got accepted into her dream college and now works as one of the few undergrads in an extremely competitive lab where she's already making quite a name for herself as a leader. This student's path is inspiring, but not surprising. The more you incorporate these skills into your life, the more you learn how to filter out the noise and develop the confidence to trust yourself and your judgment in order to develop a plan that is authentic to you. These skills make you more resilient and resourceful in the face of unexpected challenges and failures. Whether it's a rejection, difficult feedback, poor grades, or even canceled plans due to unfortunate circumstances, failures as common as they are can feel painful and even paralyzing in the moment. Learning not to bury or personalize the failure is key. Instead, extract the lesson and transform the failure into useful data points. What am I supposed to learn from this? Is there something that I can improve? Is this worth my time? Do I even enjoy working with these people? Do I even like this activity? When you start asking these questions, the failure no longer holds you down in shame or regret. Instead, you discover useful and insightful data points which can help you clarify your goal, improve your performance, waste less time, and adapt whenever necessary. It hurts when one door closes, but when you leverage your leadership toolkit, other doors suddenly appear. You realize that not one person, one school, one job, or any other opportunity is the gatekeeper to your dream. There is always more than one way to get there. I sincerely believe if we all had the courage and the know-how to harness our unique strengths and interests and do the work we find meaningful, then the world would be a much better place. Investing in your leadership toolkit will help you aim high, embrace the uncertainty, and achieve impact. And when you do, you will be all set. Thank you.